As COVID-19 spread throughout the world and cities and industries locked down, we witnessed one unexpected outcome, the biggest fall in CO2 emissions in the history of modern civilization. In the first part of our Climate and Coronavirus series, we explore what impact this CO2 crash will have on climate change. In November 2019, the UN said that greenhouse gas emissions must reduce by 7.6% per year to stop warming going over 1.5 degrees by the end of the century. Failing to heed these warnings and take drastic action to reverse emissions means we will continue to witness deadly, catastrophic heat waves, storms and pollutions. CO2 makes up three quarters of all greenhouse gases and with it rising every year, the target was widely regarded as unachievable. Then coronavirus happened and CO2 emissions plummeted. So how does that drop compare to the ambitious 7.6% target? At the height of the crisis, CO2 levels fell by as much as 17% globally. That sounds like a big drop, but to put that into context, in 2020, during peak lockdown, we were still polluting at the same rate as we were in 2006. And it's thought by the end of 2020, the overall drop will be far less than 17%, more like 7.5%. That's still similar to the UN greenhouse gas target of 7.6%, but it also states we would need to see falls at that level every year for a decade. So why are such aggressive targets needed? Here's a simplified explanation. We hear a lot about CO2 emissions, but we should be just as concerned about CO2 concentrations. This tap represents emissions and this container represents the CO2 in the atmosphere, which contributes to global warming. For the past century, we have been filling up this container and we are at a critical point. The levels increase because the rate at which CO2 leaves the atmosphere is the equivalent of a dripping tap. Of course, emissions have dropped, but they haven't stopped, so the container is still filling up faster than it is emptying. Make massive reductions in that flow for 10 years, like the UN recommends, and you can, in theory, reduce that flow to manageable levels. While the impact of one big emissions drop might be limited, it made scientists rethink the way CO2 emissions are measured. In order to assess the scale of the drop, the first ever study attempting to quantify CO2 emissions on a daily basis was published and others are following. Previously, emissions data would often take years to make public. Coronavirus created a need to look at data on a real-time basis. This development could be crucial in holding governments to account, encouraging more immediate action. Keep an eye out for the second episode in our Climate and Coronavirus series. We explore why one major city saw a 72% reduction in emissions, but another fell by just 10% despite both being in lockdown. <laughs>